This is the Necro Butcher, and you're watching Death vs. Luke Hadley. And I'm not high. <laughs> Nothing would have killed us. You guys gonna brawl out to the fucking playground? Was it a good match? Uh, My opinion, it was we, awesome. We would have dead more, but it was like 110 when we got in the goddamn ring. I know, dude. Yeah. And, and the, 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 there was no point in us going out there. The crowd was tired. You know what I'm saying? There's no point in going out there getting overly sliced up. You know so you punched Lane in the balls? He, he got him in the wrong part of the match. He was supposed to wait. Dude, he was running out back to the back, and he wasn't kidding. He's like, get out of my way. Oh, I drilled him. I drilled him. Because cause we, we didn't call too much of that match. But we called, like, one little spot, one little portion of the finish. Mm -hmm. Like, he was supposed to uh, get up at a certain point and get in the ring and fuck with me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was going to do something with Danny Havoc, which we talked about. And I look up, and there's Insane Lane throwing the goddamn poster at me. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'll have to watch the tape of that one. You really nailed him, though. Yeah, it, was like, like, it was like I got some shoulder power into it. Like, I, like, I cocked my arm and delivered a blow. Was he mad at all? Well, he knew he fucked up. I didn't tell him he fucked up. Oh, okay. What's he going to do? I don't see him on the bottom. I won't tell him what gross story is after that. I don't even know if you heard it before. I don't see an ashtray. I thought it was a smoking room. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, That's my price told me Well, if they don't want me to burn the rug, I, there's no cups. So, see that ice bucket over there? Put about a quarter inch of water, not even a quarter, like a little drizzle of water in it. And what the fuck kind of cigarettes are those, dude? Uh, they're the new Camel Wise. It's, a, it's like a more cedary. Brown or red? Or yeah, it's more like a cedary. This one. I love that you're filming stuff, because that's what I do too. I mean, it's all the time. Let me know when you're wrong. All set, man. Okay, man. I'm gonna tell these guys the grossest. Well, I will limit this to you know many people who have worked in the go-go industry have tons and tons of disgusting, perverted, weird shit about freaky, horrible, perverted people that do the most fucked up shit in the world. And every time you meet someone in that business, they think they have the gross story. And every time I hear that, I say, you want to bet? I have the grossest story of anything that has ever happened in a go-go bar, ever. Do you want me to cut this? And, and, oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, I, I smoke on camera. I don't care. <coughs> Dude, I've had Will Escobar, man. you got to catch me with it, not doing you it on film. You filmed me in the middle. You thought I was going to ask him. You know, sorry, last time I took like 32 hits. Dude, he, I got some footage of him just know. wandering around dazed and confused. <laughs> so, so anyway, what happened is I worked for a long time at this place in South Philly. It's no longer there. Called Teasers. It's right down on Oregon Avenue, not far from the ECW, CZW, Viking Hall, Bingo Hall, whatever. Right up the street. Awesome. Um, big place. About 90 girls a week worked <laughs> in that place at least. Uh, we were open six to, six and a half days a week. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, uh, five and a half days a week, you know, two shifts. And I worked the entire time the place would be open. I was a DJ. And during the daytime, I was actually also the only male in the middle of Philadelphia to keep ordering this place. Right? So I'd work an eight-hour day and then a 16-hour day, a 16-hour day, a 16-hour day, a 16-hour day. Well, every, after pulling those hours, because the money's great, right, Saturday mornings, um, you know, would be a special time because now there's only just this one quiet afternoon and then this horrible night tonight, and then we get a day off, and then we start over Monday. So our ritual on a Saturday afternoon, we had a female bartender that was also the manager in the daytime. We'd only have like five or six girls, and usually there'd only be like 30, 40 guys in there at most, not like the three or 500 on a night. So we had this habit of going down and making, getting groceries and making a big meal and hanging, just chilling, real relaxed atmosphere. So one day, Saturday afternoon, <laughs> chilling. So there's like six or seven customers in the bar. The bartender calls me down. She says, Bill, come here. There's something really, really horrible fucking smell here. I don't know what it is. I think it's like a dead rat or some fucking shit. Can you? I'm like, oh, you want me to take the flashlight, get down on the dirty, greasy rubber mats behind the bar and look under all the shit and look for the dead rodent. Okay, I'm like, it does really reek whatever the fuck. But I don't think it's a dead animal. 
So we start looking. I'm looking everywhere. I can't find the smell. I start walking around the bar trying to pinpoint like a bloodhound, where is the smell really coming from? As I circle, I start to realize there's this guy sitting there, right? He was finely dressed, acid-washed jeans, <coughs> nice shirt, nice haircut, the whole deal. And he's sitting there, and I'm like, to the bartender, I'm like, it's this fucking guy right here. She's like, I'm like, it's the fucking guy. No, 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 right? I'm standing around. I come back down. All of a sudden, I, I ran up to change the music. I came back because I saw the guy get up and walk toward the bathroom, right? When I walked over to talk to the bartender again, as I looked down, there was something like greenish and brownie slimy, like kind of on the bar stool, like this slime, like just a little bit, like maybe about this much, right? And I'm like trying to talk to the bartender about it when this other girl, Melissa, who worked there, was a very good friend of mine, but you know, just typical of her, comes walking over with her problem. Sherry, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, and she's wearing this, you know, Daisy Dukes with the whole ass hanging out, like the, you know, like not really day, half a Daisy Duke, you know, that deal, the go-go the, the, the thing, right? And she comes walking over, running to where we're at, toward the stool, and she's like, Sherry, I need this, I need that. And I'm like, Melissa, don't, she, wait a minute, I, Melissa, don't. And she sits down and she goes, oh, like this. And of course, when she reached back, what does anybody with a brain, after not listening to a warning, don't go there, don't touch the snake, you feel the gross stuff, and then when you touch your ass to feel that, yes, there's wet stuff on my ass, of course the first thing you do is go, ah, right? She's freaking out. I'm like, I was trying to tell you there was something brown and slimy on the motherfucking stool. Now, being the tactful guy that I am and nice guy that I am, I, I, uh, I got two of them. Uh, I, I, uh, I wanted to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to slow the train. Uh, anyway, I, being the guy that I am, okay, I'm not going to just jump bad. I'm thinking, well, maybe this guy's got like a fucking colostomy bag. He's been in an accident. He has a disease. It's something embarrassing. I mean, you know, who wants to smell like that? He looks like a nice guy. Like, I'm not going to be a dick. Like, I'm going to, but, but it's so bad that unfortunately that, that can't stay in here. I mean, it, it's, he's got to have to leave. So, I'm not, But I'll handle it with tact and try not to embarrass the guy. So the guy comes back out, and we kind of like disperse, and he sits right back down on the stool with the little brown slime in it. And he, had, he, ordered, he had just ordered two drinks when he went to the bathroom, and she had got them, full drinks. They're expensive. So I went up to him, and I said, uh, dude, you know, uh, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I, I need to talk to you. You know, it's like something like, you know, I, I don't know if you have some kind of medical condition or what it is, but, you, dude, you're, you're going to have to, like, leave the bar, man. It's just, it's too bad. And he turned around to me and said, fuck you, Alice Cooper. I'm not going anywhere until I fucking finish my two fucking drinks. Well, that wasn't the right way to handle it with me. So I was like, really? Right when I'm going really and I'm getting ready to slam him is when... The fucking other customer that had went in the bathroom after he left stumbles out of the bathroom and starts vomiting on the floor in front of me, right? And he's like, you got to go. And I'm like, wait a minute. I got a problem over here. I'll get to you in a minute, right? So this guy gets lippy with me. I, not, I said, you're going to finish these drinks. I grabbed his drink, slammed him, said, now your drinks are finished. Now you're finished. Get the fuck out of here. He gave me one more word. I knocked him out of his bar stool and said, please get walking. I don't want to hit you or nothing. Just right. He goes, fuck you, skinny motherfucker. I'll be back. Lots of things happen when they say that. They come, they shoot you, they stab you, they do all kinds of... He leaves, goes out. Now i got a good deal with this guy's problem. He goes, dude, I, I, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you. Well, the reason we're telling this story is that tonight's wrestling venue, someone had taken a piece of caca and decided to do a slight little bit of graffiti, a little tiny bit, in, in the stall tonight. Okay? Now listen to this. I never those things. Listen to this, right? This is why I'm telling the story. I go over to that guy, he's like, I can't tell you what it is. Now remember that this guy, when I was trying to say, I don't want to embarrass you, I know you might have a medical condition, like, please let's handle it. Fuck you, I'm not going anywhere, right? When I was kicking him out, turning my attention to this guy, I noticed there was soaked brown water poop looking stuff from his waist down to his feet as I was kicking him out the door. I'm like, the, the guy's shitting his pants and he wants to s still sit here, right? <laughs> The guy's like, I'm not telling you what's in that bathroom. Now, I've already kicked this fucker out after he gave me a cocky head to it. Didn't really hurt him or nothing. I opened the bathroom door. 
I swear to God, man, the great spirit ancestors, take me if this is not the God's honest truth. No freaking exaggeration at all because if some motherfucker told me what I am about to tell you right now, I am the type of guy that would have went, bullshit, it's not possible. That's what we're talking, science fiction here. Somehow that fucking smelly mother fucking colostomy bag, whatever the fuck he was that I was being nice to, who had pooped from his waist to his ankles, and I thought that was something, <coughs> had painted the entire bathroom of this club, which was a big bathroom, white tile, from the mirrors to the stalls, there was words written, the fucking seats, the sinks, the faucets, the floor were covered with like diarrhea shit. The guy had painted, he had done a poop Picasso, like the fucking Sistine Chapel of shit fetishists, right? And I didn't beat that motherfucker's ass and he was, I'm sorry, see I get, I'm sorry, I get it in motion. I didn't beat, I'm, it's plus a camera, you know, hand bone. Man, I, Right, what do you want? Yeah, that's same business, right? Anyway, so uh, I this is not a work though, and and I and so anyway, I, I I did not kick his ass, and here it is. So of course, now after that, I've got to go in and connect the garden hose. I wrap my freaking hands and head in towels, wet towels, and I had like it looked like I was going to fight the bees or something, you know, like a like a guy riding a camel, like a whole. I had to go in there with a hose and like completely spray that whole bath. Luckily, there's a drain in the floor. They were smart when they built the place, right? But that's my story, man. And if anybody in the go-go, and guess what? Every time they said, no, no, I got one worse, I have not met anyone from coast to coast or in three countries that have worked in that industry that ever could tell me a story that was more disgusting, more fucking. Their usual story is like, oh, I was there, and a guy came over and said, here's my number, and handed me a napkin with his semen in it you know that that happens in every go-go bar in Whoa. the world and on occasion okay that's not a gross story <laughs> in the go-go bar this is the grossest go-go bar story of all times if you can prove it's not then you fucking come to me through however this video email myspace outer space satellite these guys those guys and you <laughs> you tell me a story that's more screwed up than that about the go-go business you think it was a fetish or was he just out of it is absolutely shit? since then because i was so blown away and disgusted and couldn't even believe what I had experienced, I started telling, well, it turns out, and this is why tonight when I heard you go, dude, like, seriously, man, like, some dude, like, white, like, painted the wall with shit. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me tell you, that's what they do. Yeah, believe it or not, there's these motherfuckers are running around, like, all over the place. Like, and then, yes, like, that might have been that guy's kid tonight, taken up for the old man, a chip off the old turd, you know what I mean? <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you weren't eating. And this is not normally my kind of story. I'd much rather tell you about why you shouldn't pick up a rattlesnake because you knew when I was going to pick me up. And once a time we saw the great white buffalo and all that other stuff. But tonight it was about caca. This is weird.